Coming up next, the guest list is brought to you by My Wedding Magazine, where the art of celebration is portrayed with the utmost beauty. Visit www.myweddingmag.co.nz or subscribe now in print or digitally so you don't miss a thing. The guest list is also supported by The Wedding Associates, hand-picked collection of the best venues and suppliers and hire plants. Whatever your purpose, hire plants have it covered. Welcome to The Guest List. On today's show, I have Anita Gatley talking about another beautiful resort in the Pacific, which will be fantastic for either a honeymoon or a wedding destination. I'm also talking to Anita from Vinca Designs, who is going to be showcasing her beautiful bridal dresses. I'm now joined by Anita Gatley, our wedding travel specialist. Welcome, Anita. Hi, Nucky. Thanks. Where in the world are we going to today? Well, Nucky, if I said to you, Bulla, will <gasps> that help? I know where we're going. Yeah, so let's go to Fiji. And most in particular, Castaway Island in Fiji. So Castaway Island is in the Mamanutha group of the beautiful Fiji Islands. Four star. Most people have heard of Castaway. It's been around a very long time. And I think if there's one thing that people can take away from today is that they need to book early. Caters really well for kids and fam the family market. So a fairly small island with only 66 traditional bureaus, three restaurants and bars, but most of their rooms only cater for four people. But they do have a family bureau that caters for 10. Two pools, an adult pool with an amazing swim up bar. A complimentary kids club that is, runs from three to 12 called the Castaway Kids Club. And the Fijians just look after kids so well. They take them off and they go crab hunting and they take them snorkeling and they do little trips around the island and they go and look at the flora and fauna and they've got a therapeutic massage beret and they're really private. The berets are really nicely appointed and they've all got air conditioning and fans. They have al fresco dining so you can sit down by the water's edge and oh, I um, love that. beautiful or a cocktail at the sundowner bar and that is amazing for spectacular sunsets. So what an amazing place to have your wedding photos. Beautiful. They do two weddings a week at Castaway, but they never have them on the same day. You've got a dedicated wedding coordinator and a team of people. They can organise your photographer, they can organise someone to come in and do your hair and makeup. All of that is catered for. They do have some summer wedding specials. We offer some fantastic wedding airfares. I've negotiated some great fares with both Fiji Airways and Air New Zealand. Benefits for all of the group as well as the bride and groom. So with the benefit of getting a group airfare and just having to pay a deposit now, they can get a guaranteed fare. For, for the following year. We can book up to 11 months in advance, but we can negotiate prices in that for up to two years in advance. It's so good So that. really good. Yeah. And I think the thing to remember too is that the bride and groom get benefits. Mm -hmm. They get guaranteed extra baggage. So having to take their dress and their cake, they get extra baggage to take that. They get upgrades to, bright, to business class and lounge access if those are available. There's lots of little extra things that the bride and groom get. Plus they're getting a fantastic airfare that they know exactly what the price is going to be. That's really important. So it is really important. And also we can add on people want to go out to different islands or they want to go and have a little holiday before or they want to do some island hopping. The hen and the stag do's, we can organise those as well. Those are all little additional things that we offer as a service. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Nikki, Castaway Island also have all the amenities that you'd expect of a four-star resort out on a tropical island. You can go snorkeling, you can do the kayaking, you can do the stand-up paddle boarding, all those sorts of things that you'd expect. They look after honeymooners really well, give them the little extras, they can have the al fresco dining on the water's edge. They do some really good honeymoon specials and as I said before, as a wedding specialist I'll always tell the suppliers that, that they are on their honeymoon and they'll throw in little additional things like the nice bottle of champagne and they might walk in and, and it might say happy honeymoon and, and they'll the, the property will be aware that they're on their honeymoon so really take that extra special care to look after them. That's lovely, that's yeah. nice. Thank you so much Anita. You're welcome. I've been talking to Anita Gatley, our wedding travel specialist. Now don't forget, if you have missed any of our past episodes, you can hop onto our website or our Facebook page and catch up. After the break, I'm going to be talking to Anita from Vinca Designs, who is going to be showcasing her beautiful bridal dresses.
Something missing in your scape? Hire Plants specialise in plantscapes with purpose for a wide range of events, weddings, expos and film shoots. Our knowledge, experience and range make it easy to enhance your venue. Ivy Bulls and Buxus, Palms and Natives, Indoor and Outdoor. Hire Plants offer easy access, delivery, installation and pickup. Whatever your purpose, Hire Plants have it covered. The guest list is brought to you by My Wedding Magazine, where the art of celebration is portrayed with the utmost beauty. Visit www.myweddingmag.co.nz or subscribe now in print or digitally so you don't miss a thing. Hi, welcome back to The Guest List. I'm now joined by Anita from Vinca Design. Welcome, Anita. Welcome, thank you. Now, Vinca Design, you guys have been around for quite some time. Tell me about the history of Vinca Design. It started with my mother, Vinca, and when she saw the bridal market when she got married, she basically couldn't believe how there wasn't really any motivation, any, any innovation, shall we say. Uh, there was patterns, there were dressmakers, um, there wasn't really anything professionally done and as a designer you know for herself and in a small way for others she bought a little shop with a dressmaker and um, and then decided to you know to start bridal design and and special occasion and she started in Hamilton then grew into Auckland and then my father got into uh, publishing bridal magazines before anyone ever thought of it in the early 60s and it just went from there. They started importing fabrics and because there wasn't any and you had to have an import license of these beautiful laces and embroideries from all over the world and then they sold up and down the country to bridal fabric shops 
and so and then they had a pattern making service so they were so so forward and so directionally focused to helping New Zealand brides for the last, what, two generations. So this is making it the third generation of people actually having some connection to Vinca. So tell me, what is your involvement with Vinca Design? Well, having grown up with, with Vinca, being a designer, my mother being a designer, you know, I couldn't help but sort of entertain myself in the workroom. I learnt watching her, and then of course, as soon as I could, I was actually trying to get involved in and, um, and of course she had me doing the lowest of all jobs and of course I'm still doing the lowest of all jobs. I'm still making bales and still doing the, the cleaning and bits and pieces but you know the reality is there's a real passion for what we do and, and you know it just I have to keep going you know it's just something we love doing. You make the most amazing gowns. Thank you. And, and there's definitely a style that's, that's kind of a, your signature style. I think it's, I think it's our fit. I think we're really well known for our fit, and uh, and actually they're comfortable, but the gowns actually flatter. Mm -hmm. They don't actually, you know, ride up and down with wear and <laughs> move around. And yeah, it's just yeah, we're really into enhancing the the female form. That's our little happy place. Yeah, I I think it shows as well. I mean, just looking at the gowns that are on these mannequins now, you can just see that they they fit the the form very beautifully. I know, but you know, like if you've got a good little butt, you want to show that off. Absolutely. You know, you want to <laughs> you want everyone to say, you know what, I have I have got a lovely figure. You don't want to look like it's all like you're trying too hard, but you do want to show that you've got this beautiful figure. And even if you don't, you want a gown that's going to enhance you and make you look better and better than you've ever looked. You know, so, you know, and if you've got a, a beautiful back and it's just about giving something that you look back at those photos and go, oh, that was such a beautiful gown and I still love it. And, you know, that's, that's how it should be. And it was me, you know, you're not trying to be something you're not. I, I totally agree. Now let's talk about the design process. What is your design process when somebody first come, well, walks through the door in Well Queen often Street? people come in with no idea or actually or they've got so many ideas that they're just a little bit overwhelmed. I don't know, what do I do? And, and basically looking through the, the range, it's quite an extensive range we've got of all individual one-off gowns. So that sort of leads them in a direction where the lights come on, they can see, actually, that looks really, really good. And then they might go, but you know what, I don't like that sort of fabric, or I don't, you know, I'm not into sparkles, or I really wanted something, I don't know, whatever colour or whatever. And, um, and, and so that's my job is to interpret all that and, and then create it. I'm not trying to sell this dress. I mean, it'll sell itself. But if, if the right girl, if it doesn't flatter in the way it should do, then we need to go back to the drawing board and go, you know what, if we did this and cut that a little bit different here, then that would look incredible and suit you better. It's actually made by us, and I have the most amazing team working with me who have we've been together forever um, under Vinca um, before she got sick and couldn't um, sort of be in the business anymore. I think it's a really important point that you just made though, is that the person that comes to you and deals with you, you are making their dress. Yeah, it's not lost it's, in no. that translation. So hopefully, um, you know, I'm sort of, and if it's a good idea and I just think, that's gonna look insane, are you serious? And if I don't actually believe it's gonna flatter her, I just think I'm the wrong designer and I'll say so. I think, you know what, I'm probably better to find somebody else to do that rather than, or I'll, I'll try and gently persuade her to do something I think that perhaps be a bit more flattering. Because if they don't have that look in the end result, then they're gonna look at me and go, well, why did you say? So why do we want that? We want, it's our label on the back of them. So we want that to be the most incredible gown she's ever worn. I think that honesty policy is a very, very good one well, to if, have. If we can't have a working relationship of honesty, then it's not gonna work. Just think, where was her family? Where, who was the person who sold that dress to her? How could they do that to her? Absolutely. I mean, even if it was an imported gown, who altered it and said, we can do this for you? You know, they, they must look at a dress and go, you know what, this isn't gonna look like it should look. You really need to start again. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's the sad thing is, is I don't think there's enough honesty out there. People are just like, you know what, I can make some money out of this and just let it go. Yeah. And it's when those photos come back or when they, you know, when they see the end result and they go, oh my gosh, why didn't somebody say? And they're sort of squeezed into a dress or it's hanging off them or the, it's just so gapy around the bus that it looks like you could put the dinner plate with all the food um, down there and it's still wriggling around and you just think that's not how it should look. 
Now, let's talk about the, the imported versus bespoke, because you do bespoke, that's what Correct. you do. Yeah. We, and, we, and you we, do it exceedingly look, well. It's so tempting to get into the imported gowns because they are, there's a definite price advantage, mm -hmm. huge price advantage, but it's not the same thing. And it's okay, it, it, it has to be for some people, that's their budget and that's all they can afford then you know I wish them well but for those who are prepared to spend a little bit more money on them on the end result um, then you know that's that's where we are but then to be fair some of them they come <laughs> at, at a certain price um, they come in a little box they spend how much getting it steamed if those creases will actually come out and then the altering and then is it going to look right and so and the fittings and so all that they're paying extra and so sometimes they're saying, you know what, I, I spent all this money and it's still... It's still not the dream, dream it's of my... Not, it's not yeah, my, dress gown, my dreams. Yeah. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about some of these beautiful, beautiful gowns that you have in here. The fabrics that you have? The fabrics come from all over. You know, some of these fabrics I've got a... Yeah, I mean, on the top end, $1,500 a metre. Wow. But, I mean, it looks incredible and you don't need much. But if that's your happy place, you're the next girl will go, that's, that's whoa, way too much. Yeah. You know, and they just want something simple, and we can show them a lace for a hundred dollars. You know, so it doesn't matter. It's what makes that gown and what makes that bride her gown. So the kind of dress that we've got here, yes. what would you describe this as? Well, it's a sort of a long line fitted bodice mm -hmm. um, with a bit of a cheeky, you know, sort of an uplift on the bottom there, and then you've got this sort of full crazy skirt going on, which is adding a bit of drama. Mm -hmm. But then. One girl will turn up and say, oh, I love that, but I don't like the skirt. It's too full and fluffy for me. I like soft and drapey, and that's cool. We yeah. just swapped that out. So, and like, I've done an I illusion sort of back. back. back is Simply we're looking at that lace, it's stunning. But then another person will say, you yeah, know, nah. <laughs> I, I, I want something else. Or they've got a big scar or a tattoo or something, and they go, look, I'm not sure. And this one here? That this one, is beauty. that's an incredible lace. And I just love the floral and the soft, and then I've put a blush silk underneath that just to give it a, just a bit of warmth. Uh, interestingly, when you see gowns in daylight, they actually get bleached right out. They, yes. they all look white, even this will sort of photograph in a really light shade. But the fall of this lace and the, the drape of it, I just think is the most amazing effect. And I just like what's that little detail in there. A little bit and of Swarovski just yeah, to throw it in. I mean, clearly she likes bling if she likes this dress. Absolutely. So a little bit more drama. I've given a like a little bit of a I like trope. that little, yeah, the little collar's nice. It's a very simple line. The, the lace is busy. So you don't need to do much, but no. she might just one bride will might say, "Look, I want, um, I don't want strapless. I want shoulders, mm -hmm. easy, um, or they just want a chiffon skirt and just forget all that, you know." So that's this, it doesn't really matter. Or they might just want a big full, you know. It just again, it comes down to giving inspiration to brides, mm -hmm. and then that's you know we we sort of toss ideas around until we get to the right conclusion. I've seen girls come in with a, with their own dress. Mm -hmm to choose accessories because I've got the most a beautiful range of accessories and um, and again different jeweler you know and they're not some of them are imported they're very inexpensive and they've got some more little small and intricate hand made pieces with Swarovski and rhodium plated and you know different platings on it to give different effects um, and um, and flowers and all sorts of little and fascinators all sorts of bits and pieces and so they come and choose to finish their dress and you see some of these gowns and you know it's fantastic for me because we're like oh wow that's terrible <laughs> but i mean you're not saying it to her but she needs to make it look better yeah. and you can see in her little face she's like oh it's not as she wanted it but she has to make do so the accessories are helping with that now bespoke obviously they, they come at a cost so well, what sort of what sort of range are we looking at realistically for bespoke you're looking at late threes to you know in the fives really mm -hmm. uh, but most girls spending between four and five as an average um, but it really comes down to the fabrics like this fabric is not cheap so if you've got so much of it there well of course it's going to be a little bit more but you surely have then seen the value of it Absolutely. but if they say look I don't have that sort of budget what can we do well if we eliminated this change that blah 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 so this is how we can sort of dumb it down a little bit to get that effect but the, no matter what you do is like the laces, there's huge difference. This could be 800 bucks in a, in, a, in a meter of fabric. So, okay, well, this is a good alternative. What do you think? Um, 
So that's a really w a good way of doing it. And often I'll give a bride a beaded version and an unbeaded version. Great. And so the same design, which how incredible is that? Mm -hmm. And so though, and so she can think about it. Do I value that or not? Mm -hmm. Does does it matter to me or not? Or they may want a little bit of beading on this part, but then this plain. So this is where we really try and work. So the gown is exactly what the bride needs financially as well. Fantastic. But she's not paying for all these extras on top of it to make it look better. You know, <laughs> it's actually the cost of the gown, and it's not like a, it's a big surprise to try and try and tighten it up with all these other things to make it pretty. So you're making it work on both ends. It's sometimes said by someone who's who's quite flippant about it and go wedding dress. You know, it's, it's, she's only going to wear it for half a day. What's the point? You know, why spend the money? And it's like, well, she'll never ever forget how she felt on that day. It's the most significant day she'll ever have in her life. I don't care what she's. She is, it's so important, they, these girls have put so much energy into planning this wedding, as you would know, and so much love and so much thought. Um, so it's like her little armor plating, really. She, you know, it's, it's, if she's looking good, she knows she looks good. She doesn't have to be thinking about a dress. She's just out there having a great day and planning, you know, enjoying every moment, but, and without, you know, fidgeting and rearranging it and trying to tweak it all the time and fidget with it. I mean, that's terrible. Um, but these girls will never look at those photos and think, God, what was I thinking? You know, you're, <laughs> you're there. And, you know, 20 years later, 50 years later, these mums and nanas are coming in going, oh, I love my dress. Or it was the most beautiful fabric in the, you know, and they can relive it like a birthing story. Yeah. And, and, the, and, or there's a the story of, oh, my dress, it was terrible. Or, Oh, my mother made the dress, or my auntie made the dress, or something. And there was a, a drama attached to oh, it. Oh, and I was, oh, it was what my mother wanted. I didn't like it, and then I had to wear this jolly thing. And you know, the, and it's, it's, it's quite polarised. They're mm -hmm. either loving their gown, and they've got this amazing story, or they've got this really sad one. And you never forget it. Mm. So it isn't. It's money well spent. Anita, what's the best way for brides to come and find you? Would it be on the website? Do they come and pop in and see you? Uh, either way would be fantastic, but the website is um, uh, vincadesign.co.nz or they can phone us. We love a conversation, that's great. Anita, thank you so much for coming in and chatting to me today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have been talking to Anita from Vinca Design. Now remember, if you have missed any of our past episodes, you can hop on our Facebook page or our website and catch up. And after the break, tips and ideas when it comes to theming. Something missing in your scape? Higher Plants specialise in plantscapes with purpose for a wide range of events, weddings, expos and film shoots. Our knowledge, experience and range make it easy to enhance your venue. Ivy Bulls and Buxus, Palms and Natives, Indoor and Outdoor. High Plants offer easy access, delivery, installation and pickup. Whatever your purpose, High Plants have it covered.
The guest list is brought to you by My Wedding Magazine, where the art of celebration is portrayed with the utmost beauty. Visit www.myweddingmag.co.nz or subscribe now in print or digitally so you don't miss a thing. Welcome to The Guest List, I'm Nikki Lewis. Now as a wedding planner, I'm always asked for tips and ideas when it comes to theming. And doing a theme for your wedding is a great idea because it gives you great focus. So here's a theme, country weddings. A backdrop with a barn is fantastic. You could have your reception in there or even your ceremony. Hay bales are fantastic. You could have guests sit on those and you can cover them with cloths, either hessian or even gingham cloths. Barrels are really cool as well. You can have those as bar leaners for people to put drinks on and you can have them as for display areas too. With regards to centerpieces, mason jars make great, great centerpieces. You can put flowers in them, you can put candles in them and they again, they add to the ambiance of the country theme. Gum boots, really, really cool for a country wedding or if you want to take it one step further, use cowboy boots and fill them with flowers. Toffee apples, really, really cool idea and just screams country theme. Benches, instead of a traditional chair for a guest to sit on, have long trestle tables and benches for the guests to sit at. And you can hire benches now. Go for natural earthy tones with regards to your color palette. So lots of reds and rusts and bronzes. And even your cake can reflect a natural country wedding theme. So you can really carry this theme right throughout. I'm Nikki Lewis and this is The Guest List. Thank you for joining me. The Guest List Studio Set is supplied by Hire Plants. The Guest List is brought to you by My Wedding Magazine, where the art of celebration is portrayed with the utmost beauty. Visit www.myweddingmag.co.nz or subscribe now in print or digitally so you don't miss a thing.